When opening the AC20 scope, there are two possible selections. Add drive scope, which allows to connect to a drive online, and open scope data file, which allows the user to reopen a previously saved file with the same tool. We will start by establishing a connection using add drive scope. Here, a screen opens with all the drives connected to my network. We have only one here, but you could have several, including an AC15, AC20 and AC30. I am demonstrating an AC20 with the displayed firmware and IP address details. To select this drive, I simply click on it and a beacon appears to the right. If I click on this beacon, all the LEDs will flash for 5 seconds, allowing physical identification of the drive within cabinets with multiple drives, as well as ensuring connection to the correct drive. So, I've selected it, and now I can connect. Arriving on the scope page, there is very little displayed, because web access, which is a parameter of both the AC15 and AC20, needs to be set to full. To do this, you can either go via DSE Lite, as I'm doing here, or from the drive directly. Note also that I can be online via DSE Lite and via the scope simultaneously. Returning now to the scope tool and clicking on the refresh button, the two predefined channels for this scope appear. But what will appear depends on what you have previously done with this tool. So at the top here, we have two channels, but you can have up to seven channels per drive, considering that you can also have multiple drives connected at once. Here we have two, but you can connect up to seven. And you can see here that they appear to the side. But for this demo, we will just stick with two. At the moment, you can see the motor current and the speed in RPM, but these can be changed easily. For example, I can select the motor current channel and select DC bus voltage in its place. Typing DC into the search allows me to select DC link voltage or parameter 102, which is displayed here. Click on set, and it is set for channel one. So channel one, DC bus, channel two, speed in RPM, then close the window. You can find here the units, volts and RPM for the relevant channels. Here we see that the scale is set to automatic for the Y axis. When we start the drive, Depending on the amplitude of the parameter measures, the scale will automatically adjust. That is all for the amplitude scaling. As far as the time element is concerned, we have two choices. We have the first option, in which all the values between the start and the end of the application are displayed, and the x-axis scales automatically. Or you can choose this icon, set the value to 10, to display 10 seconds worth of values on the screen, 0 to 10. Values recorded more than 10 seconds ago, when in scrolling mode, as we have here, are not displayed, but they are not lost forever. They are saved on the PC until all the data is saved. For the time being, we will stick with 10 seconds. I'll launch the scope and I will start the motor in parallel in order to get some values. I'll stop the motor, but I will leave the scope running a little. So you see, I have the 10 seconds of data which are displayed, but if I stop the scope and click on this icon, I will see all of the data between the start and the end of the recording. What we can see is that the DC bus had a lot of noise, but that doesn't mean a great deal since we are in auto scale mode. On the red channel here, or channel one, we are between 320 volts and 325 volts, which is not particularly useful for us. Better would be to set the values between zero and 350 volts, 
like so. And then we have something a little more useful to us with a bus voltage which varies a little, but to a more reduced extent. As far as the motor speed is concerned, the value ranges from 0 to 3000, and the auto scale function is quite practical. We can also set this manually between 0 and 3100, since the maximum motor speed is 3000. To adjust the scaling, we can use the icons here. For example, the zoom icon, which allows you to zoom in on a particular section of the graph by clicking in the top left and then dragging to the bottom right to form a rectangle and then letting go. I've zoomed in on the selected area, clearly displaying more detailed information and this can be done multiple times. Also quite interesting is that we can see two points here with the scale on the bottom. 6 seconds 559, 6 seconds 560. So that's one millisecond of elapsed time between the two points. And this millisecond is displayed here at the top. We can see directly what is in this selection. Here we can adjust the sample rate. The time base type is set to T1 for milliseconds and our sample rate is set to 1. Here a longer period of time can be chosen, resulting in a longer time between samples, which minimizes the size of the file. It's useful to have more data points for the precision of the recording, but that obviously makes the files larger. If you were to record over half an hour or even an hour, that would create quite large files. So one millisecond will suffice. An alternative selection is WAV. WAV synchronizes sampling with the switching frequency of the drive. For example, when one switch is at four kilohertz, which is parameter 412 of the drive, we will have a minimum sampling time of 125 milliseconds. That is to say that 250 milliseconds is the period for 4 kilohertz, but we have that to get 125 milliseconds. So we will have an even smaller sampling time, which will allow for more precise observation of the signals. One millisecond will suffice in most cases. Another selection we have on this screen is the trigger function. Here we have scrolling by default, which we have just seen. We have the on start function, which starts the scope from the moment the drive is turned on. And the point at which this begins can also be delayed. On stop, uh, on stop is used to see what happens when dynamic braking occurs. In this case, we will choose to start the scope at this time, which will avoid creating files which are too big. Uh, this can also be practical when we want to trigger on a fault, uh, which results in a stop, which will allow for specific recording without having excess time on the recording itself. The most common function is the trigger function, which I will demonstrate. Here we have the trigger point offset. The offset is defined in relation to time. That is to say that here we are dealing with 10% of the screen, approximately here. So here we have rising. For the source, we choose between the different channels, between the seven possible channels. I will choose channel 2, speed, with a trigger at 2000 RPM, and I will stick with the defined time of 1 millisecond. And we will start our scope like that. So if I start it up, the scope has been started, but the drive and the motor are currently stopped, and nothing happens. It is only once we pass the 2000 RPM that the recording will begin. Where will it begin? At about 10% along the screen, roughly here. So I start the drive, the motor starts up, and I will now stop it. Here we have around 2000 RPM. 
we can see that we start around 10% along the screen. So we can see the 10% before and then the 90% after the trigger point. With that, we can save the data in case you want to process the data later. You are able to go to scope here, save scope trace, save the file, and then open it later with the same tool. I have the ability to save my channel definitions too. Here, I have already defined four channels and can save them in the settings of the scope tool. So here I will give it a name and to reopen it, click on the colored icons just underneath. Here I have several definitions. Uh, I will open a different one, AC20 demo, where I have the three defined channels. Do not worry about the recording here. That is simply a recording of the scope settings rather than actual values. Now I will return to the demo scope. That is about it for the functions. However, there is one more important feature. Uh, we can add another drive. Were multiple drives on the same network, I could connect to more than one. And at that point, you could have, for example, four channels for one drive, four for another, depending on what you need to show. So in the top corner, save scope trace, we have just seen, close all to close the application, print, save as an image, export to a CSV format for processing with a different tool, and copy to clipboard for pasting directly into a file.